The Bull Simons Award, named after the legendary Colonel Arthur Bull Simons, honors the spirit, values, and skills of the unconventional warrior. Tonight, we pay tribute to an individual whose distinguished service cross for valor in Vietnam set the heroic tone for the rest of his military career. He has consistently responded to extraordinary challenges with extraordinary results. Major General Eldon A. Bartwell. I spent uh, a year in Vietnam in Recon Company, then I left Vietnam for a little bit over a year, and I went back to Vietnam and volunteered to go back to the same company because I was comfortable with that mission, and Billy Waugh was the Recon Company Sergeant Major. The target was uh, called uh, Golf, Golf 5, which was at the north end of Ashow Valley, but was in Laos. The NVA transit route for trucks and and troops came down through Gulf 5, Gulf 6, Oscar 8, into Ashow Valley and on into Vietnam. And we put our people up at the bottlenecks trying to beat them to death with bombs and so forth. Our men high, they low. But the problem was that they were high too because they put about 80,000 people against us to ferret the teams out. We'd been having a lot of trouble getting teams into landing zones without being shot up on the landing zone, helicopter shot down. It was, we felt that they knew where we were going to land before we even got there. Going in by helicopter is not a lot of fun. As soon as they land, the teams are alerted. They know that they're in. Word is passed. Signal, radios, they intercept our messages. Their, their combo was as good as ours, I want you to know. And they knew he was there, so the chase was on. And that particular mission, I was carrying an RPD uh, Russian machine gun. Bargewell was unique that he liked to carry a RPD, which is a Russian submachine, a Russian heavy machine gun. It's an ass kicker, 7.62, muzzle velocity at 3,200 feet a second. And when that round hits you, you're dead. And he's strong. You gotta be strong too. You can't sit down in a fetal friggin' position and expect to make it through life and more. And Eldon did not do that, because if you do, your ass is gone. We had decided to infill at last light so we could get away from the LZ into the darkness and hide. We set up our perimeter, which uh, even for uh, 15, 16 guys, whatever we had with us was probably no bigger than this, this living room area. You know, we put claymores out in front of us, like six feet in front of us, uh, so the NVA couldn't come in and turn them around on you. We'd put them in front of a tree or a piece of bamboo so the back blast would, would go to the side. We knew they were probably going to attack us. And sure enough, when the first little sprinkling of light started coming through the jungle, they fired two RPG, RPG-2s right inside our perimeter. They were also started firing their AK-47s at the same time that they shot the RPG-2. But everybody in the perimeter got wounded a piece of a bullet, an AK bullet, went through the side of my face, uh, lodged underneath my eye, and I opened up with my machine gun, and the first assault, I could see them coming through the jungle, and they were probably about 20 feet away when I opened up, and there were like 10 to 12 of them on line. Uh, I basically took them out. The second time they tried from a little different angle with about another eight or nine guys, and they tried that three more times. We had wounded, killed. We were in uh, dire straits, about to be overrun, and they needed to come with the helicopters and gunships and get us out of there. And he evacuated uh, everyone but himself. He probably killed 35 or 40. It was the last one. He wouldn't go out because he had the weapon that was uh, saving the day. And then they assaulted us with about 60 guys. At that point, I had about four or 500 rounds left out of my 1,000 rounds of machine gun, and I ended up basically breaking up their assault on the landing zone. So he refused to go out, he sent everyone out, and then he got on the line, and that's what you got better do or you're not gonna work for me. You better be last man out if he had been, he was a one zero. 
One zero goes out any time but last, he'll never work again. And that's what saved that team. But he made decisions. You have to make a move. You can't sit around biting your fingernails in combat. And he does the same thing now. You, you hear hero on the news every day, but true hero is true warrior. That's General Bargewell. He is, he ought to be the picture in the dictionary. There is a breadth still to Bargewell that's important to understand, but there's a seed in him and there's a thread that runs through him that goes all the way back to those very tough days where, where he demonstrated considerable valor uh, in Vietnam as a very junior soldier. It never left him. I mean, he always had it. And there was an intensity in him and a, uh, an experience in him and an intuition, you know, kind of instincts. I have a jump log from my father's uh, early freefall career uh, doing Halo operations. And when I looked at that the first time, I didn't really understand it. I, I opened it up again and looked at the first 11 jumps which were all in Vietnam. And there's a little annotation down there. It's something about being a new guy in country um, to jump for the first time actually in Vietnam, which is technically a combat jump during the Vietnam War. So the first 11 entries were all combat jumps. I got scratched from the Halo School because I had a hole through my head and a couple of other places. Um, later, Billy Waugh, I guess he felt sorry for me, took me down a long time and put me through the Billy Waugh Special Halo School. Well, when Eldon got through with all, all several, several operations, I said, Eldon, you need to be on my Halo outfit. Eldon taught Halo high altitude load, and I, I had a group of people who uh, we had made a couple of combat jumps by Halo, and I, I, I needed someone like Eldon. He said, when can I join? I said, today, let's go. And then took me up in a helicopter 9,000 feet and threw me out. And I just flipped end over end all the way down. I never got stable once. I, I had enough sense to pull, I guess, before I hit the ground. Got on the ground, Billy Waugh, he jumped with me. And he, bazillion jumps, he landed right by me, came over and chewed my rear end to no end. Made me get down on the ground, show him how to get into a stable position. He said, okay, we're going right back up. Threw another parachute on me and went back up. Jumped out again, this time I kind of got halfway stable, kind of just going around, you know, not staying real flat and everything, but it was a lot better. Got back on the ground, he critiqued me again, went up for a third jump, jumped a little bit better that time, and he said, okay, you're Halo qualified, and I go, yeah, right. Very few people come through the path that Eldon Bargewell has come, starting out as a private working his way through a non-commissioned officer and then into the senior ranks of leadership. Very few people can do that. When I got into the Ranger Battalion, I mean, and the best company commander I ever had was Captain Magruder. Uh, he really, uh, he really knew how to train platoon leaders to be officers. What was brought to bear by Eldon Bargewell early on at individual squad and platoon level was all that experience from, from Vietnam. All the, the, the techniques and the procedures that he brought that were forged in combat were integrated quickly into the SOPs you know, of, the, of the company and the battalion. He, he never liked to talk about his experience. He just liked to bring the experience to the training environment and made training as realistic as possible. My lack of training in preparation for what I did in Vietnam was a significant impact on how I trained my team. You know, we were all young guys that didn't know what we were doing. Uh, and I learned the hard way on a lot of things. And I just knew that and if I'd ever gone back to war, I was not going to send my platoon or my recon team back in the war and combat if I, if I did everything that I could possibly do within the resources I had to get them trained up. You know, when you watch, when you watch his people train, when he was training his people, uh, there was there was a marked difference in in what you saw there uh, on little things that really mattered. Leadership in combat starts a long time before the first shot is fired, and this is what General Bargewell really stands out at. He is probably the best trainer that I have ever seen in my entire life.
We stood up, uh, you know, with Charlie Beck with a special mission unit. And it was during that period of time that we obviously were very interested in, in recruiting and assessing and selecting good people. And uh, uh, I think it was around 85 when, uh, at that time, Major Bartwell came through the, the process and, and was selected, made the unit. And, uh, and that's where I really had my first glimpse of it. During that time when we first moved down to Fort Benning, he was training up for the special mission unit. And I didn't understand what he was doing. I didn't even know what that unit was back then as a grade schooler. Um, I do remember my father running a lot, doing PT, rucking, getting ready for selection. And then one day he was gone. And my father came back after selection. I can remember his feet being bandaged up, completely bandaged up, um, bloody. He couldn't walk very well. And that was his, you know, sores and his experience there at the selection for the special mission unit. We're talking about days where there was no U.S. SOCOM and there was no Army Special Operations Command and there was no Air Force Special Operations Command. There was no Naval Special Warfare Command like we have today or MARSOC. Uh, there was no JSOC. So we're in, a, we're in a period that really is very difficult for most people to understand from this perspective looking back because most people don't know all this stuff didn't exist then. So he was very much with us on the leading edge of, of the growth of what you see today and what we have. As his aide, I spent probably more time than anybody with him. I, mean, I traveled everywhere with him, uh, driving back and forth all over Germany. I felt a part of what he was doing. He didn't exclude me from things and just treat me as his aide or his servant. Um, I could ask him, hey sir, why that decision? And he would be very forthright and, and here's why we're doing it. And uh, uh, I learned a lot from him in that respect. He knew how the men worked and how the operators worked and, and what they sacrificed themselves. So I think that helped him a lot on uh, just being with the guys, the, the camaraderie, um, the tightness of a group. Obviously, he's a mentor uh, to his men. I mean, I've seen him mentor other officers, and uh, I've heard stories from these people that, you know, my, my father really helped them out. Young soldiers, old soldiers, and people that have not even been soldiers, if they are around Eldon Bargewell for just a very short time, they know that this is a special, unique individual. There was a genuine respect or maybe even somewhat intimidation um, surrounding General Bargewell. The, the, the four stars definitely listened to him. The four stars, um, you know, uh, pretty much agreed with with everything that General Bargewell said. They came to him as a subject matter expert and if General Bargewell said this is the way it needs to be, that's the way it was. There was no second guessing. There was there was no questions about it. Everybody accepted that as gospel and that's the kind of credibility that, that General Bargewell brought to the job and brought to the mission and, and brought to our country. Your, your voice uh is often based upon your experience and what you can bring to the table, not just your rank. And in that regard, I would say that Eldon Bargewell uh, uh, carried a lot of weight. They are certain individuals that have in eight qualities, courage, integrity, but more than integrity, he has candor. That means not just telling the truth, it means telling the whole truth. The thing that um, the thing about Eldon is, if something wasn't right, or if he knew something wasn't right, he was never going to let it go. He he was going to keep hanging on that deal and keep bringing it back up into the fray until it was rectified. And this is a very very important characteristic of Eldon Bargewell. This guy's to the point, and he can cut through the unnecessary part of any problem with ease, and he lets like a knife through butter. Eldon can get to the heart and get the right answer, and the troops loved him. A big part of my job in Iraq was to, to protect him. And this is back in 2005 when things were kind of rough, and you, you would go down that airport road, and there was always a car on fire. Or, an attack in progress somewhere in Baghdad. And, um, general carried an AK-47. He was the only general in Iraq that had a rifle, I think. And uh, most of the other ones carried pistols. 
And I can remember one day we were standing around getting ready to, to mount up and roll out uh, the gate just to make another, another movement across Baghdad. And uh, he said, you know, you guys spend all your time training and, and, and practicing and preparing to protect me. Um, if something happens out there on the road, I want you guys to know uh, it's not about me. I want you guys to take care of yourselves. If we get into uh, a firefight or we're attacked out there, don't worry about me. I can take care of myself. You guys make sure that uh, you get each other out of here. And uh, for a guy that's a two-star general in charge of the war in Iraq, that's a pretty selfless thing uh, to say. For some reason, some people, after they become a general, have to develop an act. And it's not them. They change. I always swore I wasn't ever going to develop an act and act like a perfume prince. And so I, ex I expected respect because I was a general officer, but I wanted them to feel comfortable, like I was an approachable, even though I've had people tell me I wasn't an approachable. And I kind of thought, I wonder why, because is it just because I'm a general or a colonel or whatever? But I always just felt comfortable going in and talking to guys and not expecting them to jump through their behinds to do a bunch of stuff for me. Um, I think General Bargewell, uh, as direct and as gruff as he can be at times, I saw the other side of him, uh, particularly with the enlisted soldiers and with non-commissioned officers, very uh, unassuming, very humble, very easy to talk to, and very approachable. He touched his people in a way that, that uh, I mean, he cared deeply about his people. Again, it's just this thread that goes back to his days as a, as a junior soldier and junior NCO, and he always saw it from there. Um, I, I think it always was a part of the lens he looked through was from his experience of being somebody that followed somebody else. He touched so many uh, along the way, and that's hand in hand with his selfless sacrifices, you know, to our nation. In just about every conflict since Vietnam, he, he's been oftentimes, you know, behind that that black door, closed door, and many of us not knowing what he's doing. But we knew uh, that, that, uh, that our soft forces were in good hands with Eldon at the helm. Our country's better off uh, because of people like him that are willing to sacrifice and, and stay at work late and go overseas in the middle of the night. And the world knows, hey, we have these special guys somewhere and we can do you know, what needs to get done. Someday, Many, many people will be doing the same things that Eldon Bargewell did, and they will never even know where it came from. A large part of my motivation and dedication comes from my friends that were killed in Vietnam. I was in a unit that had 60% casualties and I lost so many friends over there and I never have been able to explain internally why them and not me. But I tell people I'll see them someday so I'll be able to thank them for you know, what they did for their country and the motivation that they gave me to, to try to always do right and to train people right so you don't die needlessly or people don't get hurt for no reason. Ladies and gentlemen, Major General Eldon A. Bartwell.